Summary of Squid Game Squid Game, a Netflix battle royale thriller that's a cross between Bong Joon Oscar winning Ho's film Parasite, with its body horror Trojan horsing a more deeper message about class strife, stratification, and predation, and Saw, has a lot going on towards the conclusion. Before we start the video please subscribe my YouTube channel so that you can be updated by my new videos. Several players are recruited into a multi-day survival game in this series. The participants are kidnapped and taken to an island, where they are forced to compete in playground games, with the victors progressing to the next round and the losers being shot, stabbed, plunged, or killed in some other creative and terrible manner. After six games, the winner receives the monetary sum allotted to each person who has been slain, with the total prize amounting to approximately $45 billion. We learn numerous things about the game by the end of the series. We hear that the game has been played for decades and that thousands of people have taken part. We learn that one of the contestants, and the winner, is the front man, who is the brother of investigator Wang Jun Ho, whom he shoots and causes to fall off a cliff, fate unknown. O oh Il Nam, number 0001, the old guy, is revealed to be the game's organizer. He started the games with a group of wealthy buddies who were tired with their fortunes and wanted to have some fun. The plot involves a group of down-on-their-luck folks who are forced to participate in a series of hazardous games in the hopes of winning a large sum of money. The story begins with Seong Ji Hun, Lee Jung Jae, a slacker but well. Intentioned man who subsists on his elderly mother's meager income. G.I. Hun is a divorced father with a small daughter whom he frequently disappoints. He's deeply in debt, and he spends the money his mother provides him to support a problematic gambling habit. He wins a lot of money at the racetrack, but he runs into some debt collectors and is pickpocketed by a young girl while attempting to flee. He was in a subway station that night. The collectors apprehend him and force him to sign a physical contract promising his organs if he fails to pay. That night, he encounters a well-dressed gentleman at a subway station who offers to play a simple children's game with a catch. G.I. Hun will be given 10,000 won if he wins a round, but if he loses, the gentleman will slap him. G.I. Hun finally wins one after several rounds of failing and receives the prize money. He's also given a card with a phone number and an invitation to join a game that promises to be the answer to all of his troubles. He dials the phone after considerable deliberation and accepts to participate. The participants are picked up and transported to an unidentified location. They all wake up in the same room, wearing numbered jumpsuits. A bunch of men in masks appear and explain that in order to receive the prize money, they must play six games and win them all. When one of the contestants asks why they should participate after being drugged and having their stuff taken from them, the masked men remind them that they are all in debt and that this game is crucial to their survival. At the event, G.I. Hun runs into his boyhood friend Cho Sang Wu, Park Hae Su, a university graduate who is presently on a business trip abroad. It's revealed that he's been charged with fraud and embezzlement, which explains why he's in this situation. Red Light, Green Light is the first game they must play. In a cruel twist, if a person is caught playing this game, they will be eliminated and die. Everyone begins to panic and gets shot down until the surviving players decide to continue playing the game. By the end, nearly half of the players have been eliminated, leaving the remaining in disbelief at what they signed up for. They decide to conduct a vote to abandon the game after bringing up one of the contract's rules. The majority of the players choose to stop the game, and they are all released. with the option to return and continue the game being open. Most of the participants chose to return after spending a few days outside and finding that their lifestyles are no better. This time, a detective named Wang Jun Ho, Wai Ha Jun, manages to get himself onto the ship in search of his missing brother. Sugar Honeycombs is the next game they'll be forced to play. Players must slice a specific form out of a biscuit without breaking it. Sang Wu guesses what the game is thanks to a tip from Kong Se Byuk, Yung Ho Yin, who had snuck via the vents earlier, but doesn't tell G.I. Hun. 
Despite acquiring the umbrella form, G.I. Hun figures out a way to make things easier and makes it through the second game. Players develop alliances, and after an incident results in the death of a person with no actual consequences, a nighttime riot breaks out to thin out the herd. The tug of war is the third game played, and despite having a weaker squad on paper, G.I. Hun and his company survive because to the elderly's wise counsel. Oh Il Nam, Oh Young Su, and Sang Rapid Wu's thinking. For the next game, which turns out to be marbles, the masked guys urge the players to form two-person teams. The twist is that each team's players compete against each other. Sang Wu allies up with Ali Abdul, Tripati Anupam, while G.I. Hun joins forces with Il Nam. Sang Wu is on the verge of losing until he connives Ali into handing over all the marbles. Meanwhile, G.I. Hun takes advantage of Il Dementia Noms to advance to the next round. A group of affluent VIPs arrives on the island to watch the final two games live, betting on the contestants to keep things exciting. Outside, a manhunt is underway for Jun Ho, who is conducting his own inquiry into the truth behind this twisted game. Glass stepping stones are revealed to be the sixth game. The players must pick between a regular glass or tempered glass step on two nearby bridges. If they make the wrong decision, the glass will shatter under their weight, sending them to their deaths. Only Sang Wu, Ji Hun, and Sei Byuk make it to the end, as players sabotage each other to gain ahead. The remaining glass stairs shatter in an explosion at the end of the game, with one shard stabbing Sei Byuk and injuring her. The three participants are treated to a sumptuous supper before the final game, and at the conclusion of the dinner, they are asked to bring their steak knives with them. G.I. Hun stays with Sei Byuk in case Sang Wu attacks, but as she passes out from blood loss, he hurries to the door for assistance. During this time, Sang Wu seizes the opportunity to deliver the decisive stroke, bringing the game down to the final two players. The squid game is revealed to be G.I. Hun and Sang Final Wu's game. G.I. Hun wins the coin toss and opts for offensive. They dispute about how they ended themselves here and how they opted to play the game while playing the game. Sang Wu refers to G.I. Hun as a simpleton who is unable to survive in the real world, to which G.I. Hun responds that, despite his intelligence, Sang Wu has made several blunders that have reduced him to the level of the simpletons compelled to play this game. After a tense brawl, G.I. Hun gains the upper hand, but just as he is about to win, he changes his mind and tries to persuade Sang Wu to leave the game. Sang Wu refuses to return to the life he knew outside and offers himself up in exchange for G.I. Vao Hun's to take care of his mother. G.I. Hun is transported back to the city with an ATM card, and he confirms that the prize money has been deposited into his account. He returns home, burdened by remorse, to see his mother. Unfortunately, he discovers her cold, lifeless body on the floor and sobs bitterly. The tale jumps ahead a year, with G.I. Hun continuing to live the same difficult life he did previously, refusing to spend the game's profits. He receives a card that looks like a gaming invitation and asks him to meet at a specific address. It is signed by an unexpected friend. When he arrives at the address, he finds Il Nam in a hospital bed. Il Nam explains that he was the real guy behind the games after becoming bored with his current lifestyle. He had a lot of money but had no idea what to do with it, G.I. Hun chastises him for his lack of morality, but Il Nam stands by his statements, arguing that everyone who chose to participate did so of their own free will, and that he did not force anyone to stay. Before taking his final breath and dying away, Il Nam asks G.I. Hun if, after everything he's been through, he still believes in kindness on this planet. G.I. Hun eventually chooses to clean up his act and start spending his money wisely. He tracks down Sei younger Byuk's brother and leaves him with Sang mother, Wu's as he promised. He also leaves her with a suitcase full of cash and a note claiming its money owing to Sang Wu. He then intends to travel to the United States to see his daughter, but on his way to the airport, he notices the suited gentleman playing a game with another man. 
He runs over but falls short of catching the gentleman in time. He takes the player's card and dials the number. He threatens them, but the voice on the other end tells him that he should mind his own business. Before opting not to board the aeroplane to visit his daughter, he declares that he will find out who they are and put an end to the game once and for all. But, before boarding the plane to America, G.I. Hun dials the number and vows to track down those behind the cruel pranks. While the unknown caller advises G.I. Hun to let it go and board the plane, G.I. Hun reconsiders, walks off the jet bridge as the credits begin to roll. While a second season of the Squid Game has yet to be announced, the stats are in, and they're startling. Squid Game is on course to become Netflix's most popular non-English language television series ever. And considering Netflix's other worldwide big smashes, such as Lupin and Money Heist, this is noteworthy. Squid Game will almost certainly become one of Netflix's most popular programs of all time, and that implies a lot of one in USD. And a lot of one in USD implies a lot of reasons to keep the show on the air for a while longer. We still don't know much about the organization, the game's history, the guards, the train station recruiter, the organ operations, the VIPs, and the man in control now, the front man, who is also the brother of investigator Wang Junho, whose fate is unknown. Squid Game director Wang Dong Hyuk commented on this last topic in an interview with The Times, saying, one would be the story of the front man. The front man is still one of the series' most enigmatic characters. We learn his identify, but not his background, why he played in a previous game, what debt he owed, how he came to be in charge of operations, and what caused him to shoot his own brother. Detective Wong's brother, Wai Ha Jun, said he'd like to see more of the brothers in future seasons. My wish is that season 2 comes out, Jun Ho comes back alive, and the drama with Jun Ho's brother is well concluded, Wai said. Both the front man and the police narratives should become more significant, according to director Wong. He went on to explain why the police angle in Seoul, in particular, deserved greater television time. I believe the problem with police officers is not unique to Korea. I saw it on the news throughout the world. This was something I wanted to bring up. Maybe in season 2, I'll be able to expand on this. We could see a prequel season showcasing the birth of the game, the first competition, and the recruiting of the guards before Seong seeks retribution. More information regarding the old man the front man, and the VIPs could be obtained. If you liked the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe my channel for new videos.